Hey guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and hmm. So yesterday I did what I felt was a very important video on the psychology within our community, and I was hoping to do something very interesting and fun for the next video. But in Steps Games Workshop with well a pricing update and a Heresy Thursday, so let's get into it. So Games Workshop, obviously, like most companies around the world, their expenses have gone up. That's not surprising in this time. Uh, probably electricity is the biggest one for them as a plastics manufacturer. Um, injection molding machines do use quite a lot of power, uh, especially in winter. So, yeah, that's to be expected. Uh, so 6% price increase change on plastic kits price rises with games workshop used to be you know the range would go up once every three four more years um i did a price chart in an old episode i probably should pull up but can't be stuffed right now which showed how price and inflation varied over time with games workshop uh, because i went back about 30 years tracking the data um, in order to make good content for you guys. That's the sort of thing you need to do, uh, to be honest. And what was happening was Games Workshop would set a price, and then just as inflation started to catch up to that price, they would shift it up again. And that's how they've kept their business model going for this long, essentially. So they made a ludicrous amount of profit, and then slowly the amount of profit they made would start to be eaten away by the inflation catching up. And then in the last... 10 to 15 years they started doing their price rises before inflation even caught up and you get this runaway pricing effect and honestly of all companies that could stand to absorb a little bit of the cost games workshop is on that list um they're not an oil company or something like that they're not truly evil corporation you know as it were um but yeah, I, price rises have just become an annual certainty with them, and 6% is a whopper of a price rise when, you know, this product is manufactured and priced to not have to be given an annual price rise. This is all just to keep the shareholders happy, essentially. Um, what they're trying to do is keep the prices up there because they don't want to show any downturn in revenue, no matter how... Uh, valid the reason might be shareholders in companies just see that as a red flag no matter what company it is so it's not a games workshop specific problem all companies feel this need right now um, to have this runaway endless growth it's a sort of cancer eating way at businesses in general uh, it's very disappointing to see because companies aren't turning around saying well you know this year profits were down because you know there's a war going on and we didn't want to pass that price rise on to our customers in this time because they're being hurt by the price rises too. No, they couldn't have that. What they need to show is, hey, we grew another 3% this year over last year, which is only 2.5%. See, endless growth potential. Of course, endless growth is a total myth. Uh, that bubble has to burst at some point. But anyway, Heresy Thursday. So armor up with Contempted Dreadnought Legion upgrades. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. The important thing is down here. So, however, this does mean that the original resin Legion Contempted Dreadnoughts, which have Legion-specific shoulders, legs, other details, are not long for this world. They'll soon be marked as last chance to buy and will disappear for good. So if you want one before the upgrade set becomes available, you need to order soon. That's downplayed a lot, and they're really playing up how good this is. I'm mixed. On the one hand... I think I can speak for everyone here and say the plastic is probably easier to work with. Uh, styrene plastic's a pretty forgiving material. And, well, it's nicer to work with than resins. And sometimes contemptors, especially the legs, posing the legs could be a real pain in the butt. They just, the knee and hip joints just sometimes, you know. But now we're in a situation where they're taking an existing kit from the range. They're... In fact, I'll show you the kits. These are the very ones over here on Forge World website. So let's pick, say, the Sons of Horus Contempt of Dreadnought here. And what I'll do is split it into two windows like so. 
So now you can see them alongside each other and you can hopefully tell, I know the images are a little bit small, but they're the exact same torso, exact same head. So what they're doing in reality is they're not creating an upgrade kit necessarily. What they're doing is they're removing most of the Dreadnought from the product range and then giving you or keeping in production just the torso center because that's just easier to manufacture. Which, it's not the end of the world. Um, I definitely don't want to give away that vibe. As I said, I'm mixed on this. I feel like it would be nice to keep the, the resin contemptors in production, but let's think about this logically. What should they be doing as an upgrade kit? Well, it's probably not keeping the upper torsos of the old dreadnoughts, which are the exact same torsos with zero modification. They shouldn't be doing that. What they probably should be doing is creating separate parts that you can glue onto the surface, very much like a lot of people do with 3D printing. Okay, create the uh, Palatine Aquila of the Emperor's Children Dreadnought, the big eagle across the chest, uh, and, the, and the two little winglet eagles. Create those as resin or plastic parts and sell those. This is probably the best way to describe it, is a lazy half measure of trying to have their cake and eat it too. Because most people who are buying these upgrades aren't just buying it for a single part, the torso, or in this case, I guess, the head and the torso. We want things like the kneecaps, okay? You get these very unique kneecaps. See the Ultramarine uh, Dreadnought on the right here. Uh, has the shields for kneecaps. Also has that little belt buckle. Um, hit or miss, up to you. Because uh, it helps balance the model. Because when you have a model that has a huge amount of detail sculpted on, on the torso alone, and then everything else is completely bare and barren, it looks a little bit unbalanced. So you really have to fill it in with paint and decals to try and make up for that. So, you know, look at something like the uh, the Alpha Legion Contempt of Dreadnought here. See the way the leg and the knee pads are stylized, as, as are the shoulders. All of those parts work together uh, in symbiosis with this Dreadnought in order to build the appearance of it. That will not happen if this Dreadnought is this half measure. That's another interesting one, probably Thousand Suns uh, Dreadnought, another good example. So here we have a Legion Contempt of Dreadnought, which has uh, the knee and shin is one single piece of resin. Uh, and it has these little cartouche cutouts in the sides of the shins. We can put like hieroglyphs and stuff, very thematic. And the shoulders with the Achaean style trim. So it has that little... Uh, the arrow-like, almost chaotic-like trim. It just, it's something completely different. And you're going to lose that detail in the transfer over to resin, uh, or from uh, resin, the transfer over to plastic for the majority of the kit. And another one that that's really going to impact is the Iron Hands Dreadnought. Uh, where is he? There he is. So the Iron Hands Dreadnought, on the back, you can see on the back of this particular Dreadnought, uh, hopefully this detail comes across. It'd be great if it does. I'm not expecting it to, but I will be pleasantly surprised and happy if it does. Uh, it has this awesome little reactor. Uh, it's a completely different style of adamantic reactor going on at the back there because it's an iron hand and it's cool. Uh, so that's something I would like to see carried across. And it was something like the World Eaters Dreadnought. Again, this is one of the more beautiful Dreadnoughts. And look at the shoulders on this Dreadnought. The way it has the studs in the shoulder and the World Eaters icon. Uh, the simplicity of the leg designs and the trim and the way that all just works. And that's going to get swapped out for essentially one of these. Just bare, plain, boring legs. Completely flat, no trim, devoid of detail. And it's... I don't know. I consider it a bit of a downgrade, a bit of a loss. And it's okay if they want to head this route. It's, it's not the end of the world. As I said, mixed feelings. But it would be nice to see proper Dreadnought upgrade kits, not the laziness of saying, we're just going to get rid of 
80% of the mold, print you the 20% and then call that your upgrade. That's, come on, that's pretty lazy. I think people can agree. Or not, it is the internet and common sense is not so common. Uh, another one that we really see this with is going to be the Sons of Horus Contemptor. So let's go back and have a look at that one now. So the Sons of Horus Contemptor here has these beautiful, uh, you know, has all the little spikes in the shin. It doesn't just have them in the torso. It has the spikes in the shin or the greaves of the Dreadnought. Uh, it has all the skulls dangling from the belt as well on chains and the and the gold coins as well as the chains, gold coins, skulls on the on the shoulder pad of the Dreadnought. Uh, you can see them all there. Very much symbolic of the Legion. And what we actually see over at Forge World is all of that detail is just gone. Uh, so you have this ornate center, and then the rest of it is a bit, you know, yeah, how's it going? Um, White Scars Contemptor. There's one I haven't looked at in a long time. Yeah, that's another one that had some, some great detail, didn't it? So as we zoom in on this, you can see it has the, uh, the special White Scars style trim around the uh, shoulders and around the sort of hip plates uh, where it's like a silver rod with a brass or golden connector between the rods and it's also got the little fetishes it's got the ropes it's got the teeth things like that hanging from it, it has the stylistic knees uh, cool little belt buckle and tabard yeah it's it's nice stuff going on here and a lot of that awesome detail especially I feel like the belt area of the dreadnought the the crutch the groin uh that is an area where the upgrades should be kept um for these models keep that single piece in production if you can uh alongside just the upper torso because it adds a lot of the character to these models um i think probably the last one to look at before we go will be the uh, emperor's children one because that's another one we can directly compare and you tell me which one has more character. The one on the right is over the top, but it works. Uh, just the studded shoulder pads, and especially when you get to the lower half of its body there, the, the different knees, all the rivets, uh, the little third legion icon on the side of the leg, and I believe it has a palatonic puller on the other leg. Uh, yes, you can just see it. All that works to balance the model in a really nice way and instead look at the one on the left hand side of the screen apart from a bit of gold on his chest it's just a blur of purple a boring blur of purple and there are ways of fancying that up you know you could add your own rivets i did that on the plastic contemptor for my salamanders you know added rivets and a couple of other little conversion details to to help you know make it stand out a bit uh, I also added like a flame effect around the shin on the left hand side. Again, trying to add more detail to these models because I feel the plastic uh, contemptor is just so boring and barren. There are situations where that works, but I don't feel this is one. So yeah, uh, is this the correct solution to phasing out Legion contemptors? I dare say no. Probably shouldn't be ditching 80% of the kit just to give us this very ornate torso that's unbalanced. Personally, I think it's unbalanced with the rest of the design. What would work better is creating a series of what they used to do over at Forge World. They had, they had these upgrade bits. Um, I wonder if I type upgrade, if I can search up any real quick. They used to have a ton of like stick-on upgrade bits for like the different chapters, like ultramarine symbols and what have you, probably is all gone last chance to buy now, but I'll find a picture um, and stick it up. Give me a second here. Here we go, here we go. eBay for the win. Dark Angels icons. So this is the sort of thing they used to do a lot of over at Forge World, and it's all gone last chance to buy now. But they would print these sheets of, you know, Dark Angels symbols. There is nothing stopping them from doing that in plastic, uh, apart from the time and effort to create the mold. But there's such small, simple parts. You could do one that's a Loyalist Legion upgrade or a Trader Legion upgrade one. Like, it wouldn't have to be just a single Legion. 
um, but as you can see uh, on, on the screen here, I'll centralize it a bit more, uh, this sort of thing would add a lot of flavor to these dreadnoughts, especially if it was provided in plastic. So that's probably the way they should go. So um, thanks eBay um, for that, worked out perfectly. Uh, but yeah, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you excited uh, about the contempt of changeover? I know we all like plastic, but again, what is the point of having a plastic contempt of dreadnought realistically if you're going to make the whole central part that everything else connects to resin anyway you're going to run into most of the problems that you face when working with resin uh hopefully not too many air voids or too many bits of lost detail whereas uh you're going to be missing out on a lot of the good detail that you do want from those legion dreadnoughts so i guess they're encouraging people to go to the recasters now that's how i look at it anyway that's it. Uh, oh, and also, what do you think of the price rises? Do you think the company is, you know, fair in this endeavor? 6% in a few months? Uh, or uh, maybe they could have absorbed a little more of the cost this time out. I don't know, but just remember how much their record profits are and what they're valued at. Back at the other circle. See you all next time.